Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back once again to our vanilla Minecraft series, and first things first, apologies for missing last week. For those of you that don't know, because I know that some people don't watch anything other than the vanilla Minecraft videos, uh, basically last week my dog came down with a bit of a health issue, and it's taken a lot of time to tend to her and all of her kind of problems that she's developed. Uh, thankfully, it's temporary, and she is recovering fairly quickly. It's still taking up a good bit of my time, but I think we have enough time to finish at least a vanilla episode this week. For those of you who also follow Revelation, unfortunately, I'm probably going to miss a week on that now, but after that, I should be back to normal. Anyway, as you can see, we're up here at our floating platform again today, and... I want to try and take care of a bunch of little things up here. Instead of trying to tackle one big project, there's a lot of things that I've kind of left lingering from previous projects that I really, really need to take care of. And the first one I want to take care of is the project from last time. So last episode, if you didn't see it, we basically created this crop farm inside of a 1920s style building. And I like it quite a lot, but it's not 100% done yet. It's a fully functional automatic crop farm. The issue is that, well, the issue is that I'm lagging, <laughs> for one. But the other issue is that we never did this bottom floor. And this bottom floor is meant to be the storage room as well as just kind of a general facade for the entire thing. So the problem here is that our farm is really quite efficient and these temporary storage cells that I put in are just not going to cut it. I've really only been here long enough to finish up the farm, and then I logged off, and yeah, I mean, we're just really piling in the resources quickly, and even the wheat and seeds are coming in quickly. So what we want to do is create a automatic storage system, a pretty typical one for the most part, right? Just a bunch of chests lined up for our wheat, our potatoes, and our carrots. Obviously, we're going to discard the seeds. And I would also like to try and put in an automatic shulker box system of some kind, just to quick load shulker boxes so I can take them over to our villager area for trading purposes. So that's the main idea right now. I'm still a little bit iffy on the details of that, and I'm still not entirely sure what I'm going to do with the front half of the building. I think I'm just going to kind of wall things off and turn this into more of a office lobby or something along those lines. We'll see how it turns out. And in fact, I think I have a cool idea of how I can work those two things in together. So that's the first thing I want to take care of today. Probably going to have to do something about the ceiling as well, though I'm not entirely sure how that's going to go. But uh, I'll go ahead and take care of all of that stuff, and then I'll be back with you guys and we'll take care of other things up here on the floating platform. So here's what our crop farm is looking like from the outside now. I think that looks pretty good. I did have to add in kind of a basement to it, because we do have a lot of redstone under there now, obviously, and it would be quite unsightly if we could see it. So I think this is kind of a cool solution. I think that looks reasonably good. 
If anything, I think it actually ties the building in a little bit better to make it look like it's got an actual basement. So I like that. I did also add on to the entrance a little bit. Uh, like I said before, it just felt a little off to me. I think this feels better, but it does still have a bit of a problem. And I think the main problem here is that it's all sandstone, so it all kind of blends in together. Like, we have a little more shape now, but you just can't really tell. Now, the issue there is that I think if I added in another material type to this, it would feel weird. It would feel kind of messy to have, say, like, quartz pillars here. It wouldn't necessarily be bad, but it might feel a little weird to just have them in this one spot on the entire build. The one thing that I do think we could do in order to make this a little bit better would be to build a sign across the front. And I think the only way we could do that in a way that would actually look good would be with custom maps. So if we built a series of custom maps that could spell something out, like say crop farm maybe, and made it look like an old school business sign, I think that would look really cool. The only issue there is how far is it actually going to be viewable? Because the maps inside of item frames don't render from max view distance. They only render from, I believe it's either 64 blocks away or a little bit less. If it is up to 64 blocks away, that'd probably be okay. We'd probably be able to see it from our main pathway. But if it's much less than that, it could start getting a little bit annoying. It could get to the point where we couldn't really see it very well from most places around, which would be a bummer. So I'll have to test that out. That might be something we take care of in the future. But we can head in now, and we have a little bit of an interior. Nothing too fancy. It's just kind of a generic lobby, I guess. <laughs> I didn't really know what to do in here, and I don't really know if I could convey a 1920s style interior very well. Like, it feels a little modern to me, but I didn't think, I couldn't think of anything that made it feel specifically like 1920s. But I think it's okay. I think it looks decent as it is. So this room serves two purposes. One, we wanted just a general facade, so it looked a little better from the outside when we looked in through the windows. Looks like more of an actual building, which is nice. And two, and much more importantly, it's going to give us a kind of front end way to access our storage system in the back, which we'll take a look at momentarily. But more importantly, it will actually give us a way to access the shulker box system that I put in. So to, in order to do that, I have built this filing cabinet here, which is kind of a neat little design. It's actually functional as a filing cabinet because these are minecart chests. So that's kind of cool. I do wish that we had a way of dyeing item frames so I could make this gray so it would blend in a bit more. But I guess it kind of looks like a little label for the drawer, so it's not too bad. <laughs> I think it's okay. The only other option, because I really wanted something to act like a handle on the front of the minecart, the only other option for that would be a button, but unfortunately buttons don't actually stick out far enough, so you'd need to try and push the minecarts back a little bit, and then they'd be all like dislodged, and it's just not worth the hassle. The other benefit of this, having the item frames in here, is that we can actually name the items in them, and then we get a label when we mouse over them. So, these bottom three are labeled potatoes, wheat, and carrots. And, of course, we can access those, and there's nothing in them. But what these are actually meant for is an input for a empty shulker box. And what we're going to do is we're going to throw a shulker box into there, and it's going to fill it up and give us one back that's actually full of whatever we select. So, let me go ahead and toss one in and explain how this works, just very briefly. So if we go ahead and throw in an empty shulker box, it'll automatically get pulled out and start going down into the storage system. Specifically, it's going to head for the storage system relating to whichever of the crops we chose on the filing cabinet. And along the way, if we chose either potatoes or carrots, it's going to pass a T flip-flop which determines which direction it's going to go. Because both potatoes and carrots each have two shulker boxes associated with them. That way we can have two boxes just full of crops ready to go whenever we need them. And each time we throw in a shulker box, it'll just alternate between which side it's replacing. So once it selects a side, the box is going to go down the path and it's going to break the current shulker box that is already in that side, that's already kind of down that path, and it's going to automatically pick it up. And then it's going to place the new one that we just put in in its place. Of course, the one that we just broke off is completely full of crops, and that's the one we want, so we're going to send that back to an item elevator, which is going to dispense it and shoot it up through the front desk where we are already standing. So that's pretty cool. We now have a shulker box stuffed full of potatoes. Should we want to run over to our villager breeder, which is right out this way, of course, or, you know, whatever else it may be that we want to do with a shulker box full of potatoes. I suppose we can head back here quick, take a look at the actual storage system itself. There's not a whole lot going on back here. I didn't try and make it 
particularly pretty or decorated or anything like that. Uh, there is this little, like, closet-like room, and this is mostly just so I can get down to the redstone, should I ever want to do that for whatever reason. But the storage system itself does have a couple faults. The, In fact, the shulker box system, mostly, is what has a couple faults. First and foremost, because we have two shulker boxes for potatoes and for carrots, I didn't do that for wheat because it comes in so much slower, and realistically, I'm not going to use it for trading very much, so I didn't really think I needed it. But for potatoes and carrots, we have two shulker boxes, and they're broken down according to the columns. So the first three columns of each storage cell are one shulker box, the last three are a second one. Now, the issue with that is that it means the second shulker box is not going to get anything until we get to that second half of the storage system. So basically, we need to spend quite a bit of time here to fill all of these up before the second shulker box will get anything. And that's kind of annoying. Now, there's a few easy solutions to that. I could simply lock the system to always use the first choker box, at least until it gets built up. I could also just manually distribute some of the stuff that we already have into the bottom chests. And that would hold us over until the system automatically fills itself up. But realistically, at the rate this thing is going, because we are already heading into our fifth double chest of potatoes, I imagine it's about the same for carrots and wheat we are up to half a double chest. And also keep in mind that there are several more hoppers beneath these that are pulling out more and more potatoes and crops and whatnot, and a full shulker box under each one of these. So we actually even have quite a bit more than we see. And that's just from the time it's taken me to basically build the farm. So realistically, I think all we actually need to do is spend a little bit of time here. I can either AFK here overnight or even just when I come back to work on other builds, like say our sugarcane farm that we'll hopefully be doing soon, that's just going to build it up super quick. And by the time I actually need to utilize this system, it should be good enough. So I'm not too worried about that. The other thing that could be changed is I could make the shulker boxes fill up a lot quicker. Currently, they just fill up based on four hoppers pointing into them, which means it takes, I believe, a little bit less than three minutes to fill it up. So essentially, we can fill up two shulker boxes of potatoes every three minutes, which isn't bad. That should be way more than enough. And realistically, if I ever need more than that, I can always just come back here and shift click the inventories into a shulker box, which would probably be way faster no matter what I do. So... I don't think it's too big of a deal. I could technically double the speed that they have by using a dropper system, but that just makes everything way more complicated and way more laggy when we're loading up shulker boxes. So I think it's good as it is, and, well, I think that'll do it for our crop farm. So <laughs> that's the uh, item destruction. That must be some seeds going through. So, I think that'll do it for our crop farm area, at least for the time being. As I said before, I think that maybe having a sign out front would look kind of cool. And I also did, just a second ago, think about something I might be able to put in this lobby area to make it feel a little more retro. So, I'll try and do that before the end of today's episode. First, though, there's a few other things I want to take care of today up here on our floating platform. There's a few kind of just lingering problems that I want to resolve. And the first one is this right here. So, I have a really bad habit of leaving chests all over the place. <laughs> like, all over the place. Uh, these are all full of rotten flesh, to be fair. Still need to go through all of that. Uh, the stuff over at the villager technically isn't mine, but I do need to clean that up. The stuff over at the pumpkin, and even back at our mob farm, which we built like 20-some episodes ago, I still have chests over here, full of all kinds of things. I mean... Come on now, good diamond tools are sitting in here. Efficiency 5 mending pick is just being wasted in this chest. So, there's just tons of stuff. And I do this all the time because I'm rushing between project to project all the time. So I don't really have time to clean up. But it's kind of a problem. <laughs> They're always in the way. So I want to go ahead and clean these up very quickly. Just very briefly. It's only going to take a few seconds. At least for you guys. For me, it's probably going to take hours. <laughs> but... I'll try and take care of that, and then there's a few other little build details, a few things that I've left lingering for a long time that I want to try and resolve so that our floating platform's in good shape and we can move on to kind of new projects when we're up here.
You guys know that feeling when you clean your room or you clean your office or whatever and everything just feels so much better because it's not cluttered anymore? Yeah, that's good stuff, isn't it? Love that feeling. So there is still one single double chest up here, and that's because this isn't my stuff. This is stuff that someone else left up here while they were trading with my villagers. So hopefully they could come and pick that up. But other than that, across our entire floating platform and all of our projects, all of the chests have been cleaned up. And I also took care of a couple other little things. Oh, uh, speaking of that, actually, <laughs> back here in our crop farm building, earlier on I said I didn't know how to make the interior feel like it was in the 20s or the 30s rather than modern. And the one thing that came to mind as a way to convey that was a typewriter. Because who has a typewriter these days, right? So I kind of like how this turned out. It's kind of cute. <laughs> you got a little keypad thing on it. This is a chainmail helmet on an armor stand. Unfortunately, this trick isn't going to work very well in the future because the new texture for chainmail is kind of solid looking. But I've seen this quite a lot on little computers and laptops that people would make. And turns out it works relatively well for this too. So I like that. And of course, a little banner in the back to represent a piece of paper coming out with stuff on it. I think that turned out pretty cool. If you have any other ideas for ways that we can convey like a 1920s or 1930s style in here, be sure to let me know because I'm kind of at a loss. Other than that, though, I did clean up the platform and added in a few other little branches to it. So we've got this one over here, which will eventually lead to some small build. And I also expanded out this big trunk path way out here because this one does need to go quite a ways out. I do have a pretty good, oops, a pretty good idea of what I want down this path now, but it's going to take a while to design it. But it is going to be a really, really cool build. In fact, I actually just decided on that today based on some new stuff that I learned. So that's going to be pretty cool. Looking forward to that. But for today, there's a few kind of small things I still want to take care of. And those are mostly around here at our mob farm. Now, there's a few big changes I want to make here. I kind of want to get rid of this ring. Now, that ring is really critical. It's how I'm sending power to all of the different towers. Because only one of them has a clock on it. But... I would like to try and find a better way to do that, either by moving the ring down to the middle, because it looks kind of silly being attached to the top, or I could try and find another way to convey the power across. But we'll have to figure that out. I would also like to try and figure out what to do with this big area we have here. And the only things that come to mind for me, at least off the top of my head, are putting one of the, like, the laser beams that we have in our mob farm, putting a big one of those in the middle and kind of shooting that up and then connecting to the different towers like up at the top. That might look kind of cool, but it might also look a little strange being this close up to it. It might kind of ruin the effect unless we're way down one of the paths. So not entirely sure on that, but it might be a cool idea. The other option would be to have like a window looking down at the storage system down below or just having it open and having like a railing and then having that lead down to the storage system. Not entirely sure. If you have any ideas for that, be sure to let me know. For today, though, rather than focusing on stuff like that, because I don't really know exactly what I want to do, there's a few small things I want to try and fix. First up is our elevator. So the elevator itself works really well, and I like it quite a lot. The issue is that if you're laggy while you're using it, it kind of tends to boot you off. You, had, you end up falling off of it really, really easily. And if you do that while you're down here, well, you can't get back up. So I want to make a button to call the elevator down for you. So that means we're probably going to need to connect these two together and have like a wall back here, which isn't a big deal. So I want to do that. I also want to try and clean up on top of our storage systems because we have this area here with all of these torches, which is pretty unsightly. Probably just going to cover it in carpet for the time being, though I do want to change the shape of this because it is kind of ugly from the outside. So maybe that's something we'll do in the near future. I mean... That looks just terrible. <laughs> so probably going to have to reshape this later on, but that's something I want to think about for a little while. And I do also want to clean up the bottom of our mob platforms because currently they just don't really match. I mean, I didn't really take into account that we'd be able to see all of the redstone and all of that. So I'm going to try and probably put like a quartz slab base underneath that to try and cover it all up and make it look a little bit more sleek. And hopefully that turns out okay. So I'm going to go take care of those few things. Pretty boring stuff, so I'm going to do it on my own. And then I'll be back with you guys, and we'll see how much time we have left and how much more we can accomplish today. So I've done all of that little stuff. 
We can see the carpets on top of the kind of storage system. That looks a hundred times better than it did before. Granted, the storage system itself is still kind of ugly from certain angles, and we'll have to change that, but for now, it at least looks a lot better. I also fixed up the elevator. Not that it was broken or anything, but now we can actually call it down from below if we want to, thanks to this little pillar here that's got a redstone line running up it. So we can call that back whenever we want to and send it up and whatnot. That's what the elevator looks like from below. I also added in a few item frames just so we can tell kind of what chests we have and you know where everything is. I could probably fill it all in. It would definitely look better. But at the same time, item frames do cause just a tiny bit of lag with each one you add in. So I don't know. Feels kind of wasteful. But that's that. And of course, I also added in a quartz floor underneath our mob farms which just looks a lot nicer, looks a little more finished. Though it does look a little bland, I suppose, but it's okay. It definitely is better than it was. So that's that. Let's go ahead and call our elevator back down so we can get up with style. Now, unfortunately, and bafflingly, this episode is somehow over 20 minutes already, and I have no idea how that happened. It didn't feel like we did all that much today, but time flies, I guess. So, unfortunately, we can't do anything major yet today, but there is one thing that I would still like to take care of, and that is the good old dressing up of our villager. It's been a while since this guy has had anything on him, uh, since Christmas time, actually. He had his little reindeer antlers on, and he was pulling a sleigh, but he hasn't had anything on since, and we actually don't really have any major holidays coming up for a while. Not really until Easter, which is well over a month away. I suppose there's St. Patrick's Day, but... We'll see. For the time being, though, even though we kind of missed it, mostly because I missed last week's upload, I think we should go ahead and give this guy a little bit of a Valentine's vibe, just so we don't miss out on a major holiday. <laughs> At least until probably Easter, maybe St. Patrick's Day. So, I think that the villagers themselves actually give us a pretty good way of handling this. <laughs> they shoot out hearts all the time, so let's go ahead and give our giant villager a few hearts to represent the lubby-dubby mood. I think that turned out okay. The hearts don't really look amazing, and I probably should have built a little bit more size variation into them, so like we had some smaller ones and some bigger ones, but I think they turned out okay overall. I think it conveys the idea fairly well for the holiday that we completely missed. <laughs> oh well, you can stay this way until we're up here next and we do something for Easter or whatever it is we're doing. So that's going to be that, and unfortunately I think that's going to be it for today as well. Not entirely sure where the time went today, but I guess we got some stuff done at least. Now, I'm going to try and get back on track to make sure I don't have to skip any episodes of either this or Revelation in the coming weeks. I should be good now, hopefully. I think I have enough time going forward to manage that. I'll do my best to make sure that doesn't happen again. Thank you for your patience with all of that. And, well, that'll do it for today. So, thank you guys for watching. I hope you had an awesome time, and... Well, hopefully I'll see you guys next time. So take care. Bye-bye.